Safeguards are key for Red Plus because they go beyond the carbon benefits, so the social, environmental, and governance benefits. And importantly, in Cancun, um, at the COP in Cancun in 2010, a series of safeguards were developed. And these deal with um, respecting national law, um, promoting local participation in red, respecting local rights, enhancing environmental and social benefits. Um, so they really, they really make red a much fuller um, initiative, um, and they really have. I mean, they're they're key essentially because I think without something like this, the strict carbon focus and um, a strict financial type transaction focus on something like red could be quite dangerous, um, not only for local people, but also for the environment. This is an interesting question. I mean, um, basically, some countries have advanced in, in the implementation of safeguard information systems. Um, some of this advancement has been at the subnational level. A lot of it has been in conjunction with one of our partners, um, the Red Plus SES initiative, the Social and Environmental Standards Initiative, that really has provided um, conceptual and technical support to government agencies that are implementing these systems. Well, the big topic right now is whether or not there should be additional guidance for implementation of safeguard information systems. And that should actually be decided in the, in the COP20 in Lima. And some countries are asking for more guidance, especially countries with lower capacity. Um, and, and other countries don't actually want additional guidance because many of them are more advanced and additional guidance could actually negatively affect some of the work that they've, that they've accomplished if they would have to then redo some of what they've developed to follow new, new guide, guide, spe more specific guidelines. Um, so that's, that's a key question right now is, is how much international guidance will be given to, to parties um, in development of safeguard information systems, and then this general balance between too much guidance and not enough guidance while protecting national sovereignty. So, but by the end of the year, some of that should be better clarified. And, and after that, I think come the key questions of who will pay for safeguard information systems, um, what kinds of technical information are, um, it, are needed, for example, what kind of data sets could be leveraged for both social and environmental um, safeguards monitoring. So some of the, the more nitty gritty questions will happen in the near future after this guidance question is, is addressed.